5 best opening traps for white if you're playing the first move pawn to e4, as well as how you can not get trapped when you're playing black, which is also important. Let's jump right into it. After you go pawn to e4, black responds pawn to e5, the first trap is really elegant, and uh, I really enjoy it a lot. Here after we go into the Italian game, supposedly, knight of 6, the main line here is pawn d4, which is a sharp move, it leads to a lot of complicated theoretical lines. But instead you just play this modest move pawn to d3, pretending like you're just aiming for a classical positional chess, maybe you're ready to bring your bishop out here to g5, but anyway, you're slowing down, saying okay, you just want to finish my development, and your opponent may think, okay, if white doesn't want to occupy the center, why don't I do this? And so they may go pawn d5. And now after it takes and knight recaptures, it, it all looks really good for black, but there is a very sneaky move queen to b3. You're taking advantage of the attack along this diagonal, and your pieces are lining up not only against the knight, but also against that pawn on f7. And therefore the knight cannot really go away, or else it would give way to the bishop to capture that pawn f7 and attack the king, which would be really bad for black. Now, what can black do about that? Well, not much really, since they can't move the knight away, they have to protect it somehow. How can they do it? Well, there are a couple ways, maybe they can do it with a bishop or with a knight. We're gonna take a look at both options, they both are losing by the way. If knight goes there, then queen b5. Pretty cool, right? Very simple, elegant, double attack, but it's very effective again because all the previous moves were so natural for black. Let's go back one move. Instead of knight going there, they may try bishop e6. But here there is another obvious downside, it leaves the b7 pawn unprotected and you're gonna go ahead and capture it, also attacking this knight on c6 and somewhat putting pressure on the rook, and when the knight goes goes away somewhere, doesn't really matter, you still go back to queen b5 check, the same double, in this case even triple attack to the black's minor pieces and the king, therefore you're definitely gonna capture something on the next move, and again time for black to resign. And I've just opened a database of games to show you how powerful this trap actually is. Just look here at the players who are playing black. 2400, 2900, 2500, 2600. Really strong players are falling into this trap because it's certainly a very hidden one. Therefore, you're welcome to use it and win more games. In the next trap, the first moves are more or less the same. We're going into potentially the Italian game, and here I come to realize recently that a lot of players play here the move pawn h6, which may seem strange, but it does make sense actually, because if I play the normal move knight to f6, they have to know a lot of theory after knight g5, taking this f7 square, and not everybody wants to delve into all these lines, and therefore it's natural for black to try to play h6, just to block out this opportunity of knight going to g5, hoping to, after that, just finalize the development with simple moves, you know, and castle and feel good, without, you know, and get away without knowing any opening theory here. But in this case, here's what you should do. You, you gotta play pawn d4, challenging black in the center right away, because they played a bit slow here, and you wanna try to develop your attack as soon as possible. Now, what is black going to do here? If they engage in massive trade on d4, it, it does not really solve their problem, because after that, it's pretty clear that white is dominating here. All the black's pieces are still under, underdeveloped, and you're already occupying the center, having all the open lines and diagonals, black is gonna have a hard time here. So that's not what black really wants to achieve. The whole purpose of this opening for black is just to hold on the position, right? So they're more likely to play d6, play defense, just try to keep up their position in the center. And then what you do is you trade here on e5, and after this exchange, you have a nice tactics, bishop takes f7. And this move really refutes the entire setup of black, because now what can they do? If they lightheartedly take the bishop, then they lose the entire queen. So that is obviously winning, and that's what can very well happen in your games. If they don't take the bishop right here, they would have to play an awkward move king to e7, accepting the fact that they're a pawn down, and they're having this extremely vulnerable king on e7. And here, it depends on you, you can either trade queens going into winning endgame, or you can play queen to f3, and you know keep playing the middle game position, and keep attacking this king, and again, you're a pawn up, so that is completely winning. The next one is really funny, because I'm almost going to recommend you as color's checkmate, but not really. Anyway, let's take a look. After e4, e5, you may start off with bishop c4, the bishop's opening. If you follow me for some time, you know that it's one of the openings that I really love playing. I've got a separate video about that. If you haven't checked it, you may do so later. So you start off with bishop c4, 
and if they go knight c6, then all of a sudden you play queen to h5. Aiming for the scholar's checkmate. Normally, only the very beginner level opponents will overlook this and play knight f6, allowing you to execute the threat. But let me show you something really interesting. I've just opened the database of games and you can see something interesting here in the corner. Not only like more inexperienced players, well, relatively experienced, 1600, 1700 rated players, uh, you know, fell for this trap, but also 2500 rated players also fell for, for this trap quite often. Now, how come? Well, just because of a pre-move. They pre-moved this knight to f6 move without an anticipating you to go queen h5. Even though it's a cheap trick, but it actually works, especially in bullet, because people often pre-move this knight of 6 move. And even Magnus Carlsen once lost a game very similar to this one, so it can really work. But that is actually the trap that you set along the way, because the main trap is down the road. Most of your opponents will play pawn g6 to cover their can to get rid of this queen from h5. Then you play queen f3, renewing the threat, queen takes f7. Therefore, they go knight to f6. Then you play knight e2 to cover this d4 square so that they can't go there and go after your queen. And after that, I just checked in the database what they play most frequently. They play bishop g7. Makes sense. Fianchetto in the bishop. And after that, knight c3, castle, d3, d6. All very natural. Bishop g5. And here, surprisingly, they go bishop g4 most of the time. They are just mirroring your moves for, for, for the most part. And they hope for the queen to go away. But instead, you've got bishop takes f6. So you're counter-attacking their queen. They attack your, but you counter-attack their queen. And you're also winning an eye along the way. And if they actually go down this path, which is something they most often do, then you can easily see that at the end of this trade, bishop takes c7, winning one pawn. Now this bishop on e2 is hanging, it has to retreat. And then bishop takes d6, picking up the second pawn which basically means that at the end of the day, just move your bishop away, and here you are simply two pawns up and a clearly winning position in an endgame. And what's most fascinating about this trap is that we analyzed the most played moves by black. They most frequently play this and fall right into this tactical operation, which can be easily losing for them. The next trap is really spectacular and effective, happens in the Italian game here after bishop c4, bishop c5. But before we get to the trap, let me also remind you that our special offers in honor of celebration of the Christmas and this holiday season are only good for a few more days where you can get any course or package with a 60% discount. So you can click the link below the video and check this out. Because, you know, I've been teaching chess through the Remote Chess Academy within the last 12 years. And teaching thousands of students, I would be an idiot now to notice what works. And so I can tell you what worked for other students who achieved the best results and just give the same methods to you so that you can replicate that and speed up your chess progress. So if you're interested, click the link and check this out. And now we're going back to the trap where we go c3, going into the Italian game. Here after knight f6, pawn d4, exchange of pawns, you're attacking the bishop, black has to play bishop b4 check. If not, your pawns will keep going forward, driving all the black's forces away, which is something black wants to avoid, so they'll have to go bishop b4, play an enforcing move. Now after knight to c3, you're still forcing black to take this pawn, because if not, again, it can go forward and, and start attacking black, so they will have to take it, take advantage of this pin. And now you castle. Here after knight takes, pawn takes, if black takes here with the bishop, it is a relatively well-known line which is losing for black. I have another video about this, if you're unfamiliar with, the, with this line. And therefore, some of your opponents will think, okay, if bishop takes c3 is too risky, just accepting everything that's available and going down, you know, in a very unfavorable way, they can just play bishop e7. Trying to play safe and saying, okay, I got one pawn, and now I'm just going to castle the next move and realize my extra pawn. In this case, there is a truly astonishing line. It's pawn d5, taking the knight. Notice that this square is controlled by your knight, therefore he can't go there. And black will have to go knight a5, hoping that now your bishop is attacked, and once it plays back, black will castle, right? That's what they're hoping for. But you surprise them with the move pawn d6. Very unexpected move and very hard to foresee the consequences actually of this sacrifice. Now, what's going on here? If they take your bishop here, because they can either take the bishop or they can take this pawn, right? Mainly it's one of the two. If they take the bishop, that's pretty simple. You take here on e7, and after a queen takes, it's rook e1, and you take advantage of the pin and you win the queen. So that's just bad for black, they're losing the queen. 
Therefore, black may calculate this line and say, okay, let me then take this pawn over here. But then they they'll regret they didn't you know take the bishop and resign after that because here they'll lose the game in a very painful way. Rook e1 check, bishop e7, and then bishop g5. Now together with the bishop, we're teaming up against this bishop, trying to capture it. So they say, okay, let me play f6 and just cover that and attack the bishop. But instead of retreating, you're sacrificing it. Bishop takes f6, pawn takes, and then knight e5. You're breaking through the defense in the most brutal way, just sacrificing everything on your way to chess success. What's the point? Well, you open up this diagonal. Pretty cool. And the queen is aiming for some kind of a scholar's checkmate. Or the queen could also go this route, queen d5, queen f7. And basically, black is really defenseless, mainly against queen to h5. For example, pawn takes, queen h5 check, king f8, queen to f7. Very nice. There is also one more interesting line here. Let's go back a few moves. In case black realizes that you're going to play your queen to h5 after whatever they do, they may play pawn h5 themselves. In that case, like we discussed, you may use another trajectory and play queen d5, aiming for the same queen to f7 checkmate. They go rook of 8 to cover it, the only move. And here I'd like to ask you to think about this and to write it down in the comments below if you can find the winning move, because it is actually checkmate in three, in three moves. But it's not that simple to see it. So, of course, white wins in many different ways here, just because your position is so strong, but we want to, f to win within three moves. So can you find it? If you can, write it down in the comments below. And the final trap for today happens in the Italian game once again, because it's the most played opening on amateur level. So therefore you go pawn c3, knight f6, pawn d4, attacking the bishop. We have seen this in the previous example. But here you go on bishop d2. Instead of covering it with a knight, you can also play bishop d2, which is another good line here. Now if they take, you're just recaptured with a knight and everything's good. It's a balanced position, you know, approximately equal, but you have still a slightly more initiative position here. But after you go bishop to d2, your opponents may realize that taking on d2 helps white developing their knight, and some of them may wish to grab this pawn on e4, because it looks like, well, just a free pawn to take, why not? But then after a bishop takes and knight takes, there is the first surprise, bishop takes f7, which invites the black's king to be exposed. <laughs> and after a king takes, here comes queen b3 with a double attack, therefore it was not really a sacrifice, because you're going to get the piece back right away. And at this point, they'll go pawn d5 to cover the king. And here is the key situation here, and the key moment. Black is hoping for you to take this knight right here, and after that they'll have time to move their rook somewhere, rook e8 or rook f8, and so their king can hide in the corner, making this artificial castling, and black is doing well. But that's the way for you to break it down. In this position, instead of queen takes b4 immediately, you play an in-between move knight to e5. And that really ruins the entire plan, the entire setup of black. Well, I gotta say though that normally it's actually a theoretical line. And black, still with very precise moves, may hold on this position. But when I checked it in the database, it seems that most of the players who got into this just don't know what they're doing. And even though, again, theoretically it's not all that bad for black, but realistically, in real practical games, black is usually crushed very, very soon here on amateur level. That's why I, I still think that it is a trap, because black is just unfamiliar with it. So this 95, in between move, very strong, forcing the king to move, and wherever it goes, let's say king e8, now the king cannot hide, and now you take this knight, and after that, they often do something like queen of 6 or any other random move, which doesn't really make much sense, but it's a very popular move. They are attacking the pawn, but you simply castle, and you were going to do this anyway. And after that, the king stuck in the center, it lost the right to castle, because it already played a couple moves around, right? And now you only need to finish your development somehow, put one of your rooks to e1, and it's gonna be over. You're gonna crush this centralized king. For example, if they do something like, oops, rook to f8, and you play pawn f3 or knight to c3 to drive that knight away, then you develop your knight, attacking this pawn, after they defend it, you play rook to e1, bringing your final piece into the game, and that is just over, right? You're gonna jump with the knight somewhere, knight to c6, whatever, you can see that this pressure is just too strong for black to withstand. Pretty cool, interesting way for you to win the game against black, who was trying to just play normal moves. 
And finally, of course, let me send my warmest uh, Christmas and New Year greetings to you in advance. I hope that you and your loved ones are safe and having a great time. Also, I'm curious to know, because this time of the year, we often set goals and expectations for the next year. And therefore, I'm curious to know, what's your main chess goal for 2022? Write it down in the comments below and yeah, I'll see. And maybe I'll record even some videos about that and how to achieve that. So thank you very much. Take care.